This is video 41 in our uh, series on analytical mechanics. The uh, playlist for all the videos is at the website uh, digital-university.org. Now in this video, we're going to consider a situation where, again, we have a ball in motion. It could be um, a billiard ball or a bowling ball, whatever. It has linear velocity in this direction and an angular velocity in the opposite sense. And in this problem, we want to consider a situation where it sort of skids forward, comes to a brief stop, and then skids backwards. And what we're going to do in this uh, video is not try to explain why it behaves like that, but to determine what would have to be the initial values of v naught and omega naught in order to get that kind of behavior. So let's say it's something like this. We have the ball. skidding forward with an initial velocity and a backward spin. And then at some point it stops and comes backward. Now when it comes backward it's rolling backward. So when it's rolling backward it's in pure roll then. So it's getting across the surface, stops, comes into pure roll, and in, in the reverse direction. And let's say that for our problem, when it goes into pure roll in the opposite direction now, the velocity at that time, let's say that will be minus three-sevenths what its initial velocity was. So to have this kind of a situation, what would have to be the relationship between omega naught and v naught? And that's what we want to determine um, in this video. And again, we're not really explaining why it has this behavior, why it skids along, stops, and then comes back in the reverse direction. That will be for um, another video. What we want to do is uh, see if we can get a handle on what would have to be the relationship of omega naught and v naught in order for this situation to take place. So what we're going to do, if you've watched these series of videos, starting with video number 33, um, is exactly what we've done in the previous videos over and over again. Here is our ball linear velocity in the positive direction, angular velocity in the opposite sense. As it skids across the surface, there's a frictional force. And the velocity at any time, if you've seen in the previous videos, is this, V naught minus mu g t, the frictional force, which points in the negative direction, so there's this minus sign here, is the coefficient of friction times the mass of the ball times gravitational acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. So we know in general, this is a general kinematic equation, only here the acceleration will be frictional force divided by m minus mu g. So this is the equation for the velocity, the linear velocity of the ball at any time. And then analogously for angular velocity, we have this general equation. Only remember now for our situation, omega naught is going in the opposite sense. So for our problem, omega naught will have a minus sign by it. And this, of course, is the angular acceleration. And we determine the angular acceleration just as we've done repeatedly in our past problems. We consider the total.
torque about the center of mass, and that equals the radius of the ball times the frictional force. And it's a positive torque at that. And again, um, we've done that many times now. It, the torque about the center of mass is just R cross F, F of course being the frictional force, but they're perpendicular, so it's just going to be R times F, and then R points downward, F goes to the left, we line the vectors up like this and we're taking a cross product, and then for R cross F, then we wrap our fingers around like this, and the thumb is pointing downward, so the torque is pointing downward, the fingers wrap around in the clockwise direction, that's positive. So the torque about the center of mass is just simply the radius times the frictional force, and it is a positive quantity. And we know also the torque is equal to the moment of inertia about the center of mass times the angular acceleration. And this is positive. So alpha will equal RF divided by the moment of inertia. That's this expression. These are all positive terms because the torque itself is positive. And this is the moment of inertia. So we have cancellations, and here is what we end up with then, as we've done in the previous videos, for the angular acceleration. So we have this equation for the velocity at any time, the linear velocity. The angular velocity at any time will be minus omega naught plus this term multiplied by the time. And that's what we have right here. The angular velocity at any time is this. The linear velocity at any time is this. Now, when the ball at a certain time, call it t prime, when it goes into the pure roll with a velocity of minus 3 sevenths v naught, that, say, is at time t prime. So at t prime, the velocity is minus 3 sevenths v naught. And here, then, when the ball comes back, it's not skidding across the surface. It's rolling across the surface. It's in pure roll. So we know that the velocity at that time, which is this, has to equal the radius times the angular velocity. That's the condition for pure roll that we established back in video number 30. Okay, at time t prime, the linear velocity is this. Well, here is our equation for linear velocity. So v has to be minus 3 sevenths v naught, and that will equal v naught minus mu g t prime. We'll take this over to this side of the equation, and we have that mu g t prime equals 10 sevenths v naught. So notice that if we know what the coefficient of friction is, and if that stays constant, then we can determine the time at which the ball goes into pure roll, rolling backwards, but, of course, we also know the initial linear velocity. Now, let's think about the angular velocity at time t prime. Here's our equation for angular velocity. Minus omega naught plus the angular acceleration times t prime. But now we're in pure roll. So the angular velocity at that time is just v divided by r. But at that time, the velocity v is this. So omega is just going to be this divided by r, which we have right here. Or let's just 
just multiply through by minus 1, and we'll have 3 sevenths v naught over r equals omega naught minus 5 halves mu g over r t prime. But now notice right up here, mu g multiplied by t prime is just this. So here, mu g t prime, we can substitute this in place of it. So right here for t prime, we'll have this expression. And that's what we have. Let's set it like this. Here's what we have. This was in place now of mu g t prime. So now we have this simple equation. Uh, multiply both sides of the equation by r, and we have 3 sevenths v naught equals r omega minus, this r goes away, 50 over 14 times v naught. So take this to this side, we have 50 over 14 plus 6 over 14, that will be 56 over 14 v naught equals r omega naught, that's 4, so we have v naught equals 1 fourth r omega naught. So what we've determined is that back here, if v naught equals one fourth r omega naught, then the ball will skid across the surface, stop, and come back in pure roll. And just when it makes that change in motion to come back in pure roll, the velocity at that point will be minus three sevenths v naught. And again, in this video, we're not trying to explain why it happens like that. All we're trying to demonstrate in this video is the how these initial conditions, omega naught and v naught, how they had to relate to one another in order for this to happen. And in the next video, we're going to consider the same problem, only to solve it, we're not going to use kinematics as we did here. We will use conservation of angular momentum but that will save for the next video. And then in other videos, we'll look at this situation more closely and try to explain why the ball behaves the way